This is video five of the Sloth Knit Along. I am uh, just finished row 37 on the body. Uh, wanted to give you a quick look at where I was and talk a little bit about the process. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased at this point in time. The legs turned out really well and I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm getting ready now at row 37 and I probably will go all the way up through row 55 in now knitting in the flat. I'm going to knit a row, purl a row, so that I end up with oh, probably close to a two inch maybe um, opening for stuffing. And it doesn't have to be that much. It can be less. It, that's totally up to you um, as to how big in the opening that you make in the back. And then I'll be ready to finish knitting on up to the shoulders and get ready to attach the arms. And I will uh, make sure that I put that part on video in attaching the arms and how I actually uh, divide my stitches up. I'll show you that in detail. But just another quick look here. Um, at how the bottom side turned out. I'm happy with that. Um, I got all my end pieces tucked in. So uh, that turned out well. And um, so they're all secured, cleaned all that up. And then you can see that I have a little marker here. I put that marker in when I was uh, at row 18 so that I could keep track of the 20 rows that I uh, knitted up. I, uh, You don't have to do it that way, but this is how I wanted to have a little security so I knew that I was actually on the right number of rows and I can count up those rows and and know when I had the 20 rows done. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. I like to have my needles positioned so that at this intersection here in the back I know that this is the beginning of a row, this is the end of the row. I did move my needles a little bit around from when I quit the last video so that this front section is all on one section. This is where the legs were, of course, and um, then divided up the back so that this, like I say, is the beginning and the ending. And I typically do it this way. I mean, you could have a beginning and the ending of a row over here in the middle of your needle and put a marker. You don't have to have them positioned like this, but this works for me. And if you're a sock knitter, you probably um, kind of do the same thing if you're doing uh, double pointed needles. So that's just a quick catch up as to where we are. I'm going to continue on knitting, of course, and get up to the shoulders, and then I'll come back on the video, on this video. And this particular video will go right up to where uh, I will leave off for the head to be attached. So this won't be a super long video, but um, it will deal with the body, and then the head's all going to be on another video by itself. So I hope you are enjoying the knit along. I continue, continue to enjoy uh, hearing from the many of you that's come on and, and uh, kind of let me know where you're, where you're recording from. And uh, that's been fun to see. Uh, some of you are, haven't started the knit along yet, which is fine, which is the nice thing about this being uh, all on video. You can hop in at any time and uh, hopefully find some of these tips uh, helpful and we apply them to all the other critters. So it's not just about the sloth. We, these are techniques that work with all the others. And the only thing that we won't be doing on the sloth is ears and a tail. So, uh, but I, you know, we can figure that out, I think. So anyhow, have fun, and I'm going to continue on getting this little sloth. I think it's Edward the Sloth, I believe is his name. So we'll catch back up with you in just a little bit. I have knitted my body up through row 70. And here is my opening in the back where I'm going to uh, stuff it, uh, which I will start doing when I actually get ready to attach the head. But right now I'm at the spot 
having finished row 70, so on row 71, I'm actually going to knit in the arms. So there's a couple of things we need to do to prepare for the arms. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> I've divided my stitches, uh, made sure they were in half. I meant to take the provisional cast off on film and I took it off in that remembered, oh, I was going to put that on the video. But I just unraveled the um, crochet, uh, the stitches that I had cast on by crocheting, and I put my stitches on two needles. So I have my hand pretty well divided in half. So I have seven stitches on each one of these needles. And you can see here, I've actually closed that arm up and so I have just the seven stitches. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. If I had thought <laughs> and I should have told us to leave a long tail here on the cast on and I neglected to do that but if you've left yourself a nice long tail you can actually uh, knit these two together uh, these two rows like we did for the leg seeing how I didn't do that and how I closed this up is I just simply took a crochet hook lined these stitches up like we did when we did the leg except for we're going to do it without having yarn to do it with. So all I'm gonna do is slip um, these two stitches together. And so I'm gonna do that. It's just putting them together without having a needle or a yarn, excuse me, to do that with. So I find that if I slip them both onto my right hand needle, easier said than done sometimes, and just take that first stitch, which was on the front leg, and slip it over the stitch that was on the back leg, and it becomes one. And I do that again. Take that first stitch off of the front of the, uh, the needle that's closest to me, slip it. Now I'm coming back here and slipping that first stitch off of the back needle and I'm taking that those two stitches and I'm slipping them get back here in the camera slipping them together and they so they just look like they were you know knitted they were without any, without using yarn to knit them together with I'm just slipping one into the other So, and I'm building the stitches over here on the right needle. A little tight. Oh, I don't want to slip that stitch off. I want to slip the one off of the back needle. And there again, use my needle point here to get a hold of that stitch and bring it over the front. Now I've got three stitches done. Come back, pick the stitch up off of this first needle that's closest to me, slip it off, slip the back stitch off. And this is kind of tight quarters to work on because it is a was a tighter cast on them, maybe what I should have done. <laughs> so now I'm gonna pick up that second stitch in, slip it over the top, and now we've got four stitches done. Slip this first stitch off, slip the back stitch off. Oh, come on, Linda. Okay, there, and now slip one stitch over the top of the other stitch. Okay, two more stitches to go here. Slip this first stitch off of the first needle. I'm sure you've got 
got the picture and I accidentally slipped that second stitch off, but I caught it just in the nick of time. Slip these two stitches together. And now we have the last two stitches to do. I will feed this yarn in after I get that knitted in, secure it inside. Okay, pick up this last stitch from the right needle and that stitch. Okay, grab my little tool here just because it has a little bit tighter point and slip those together. Okay, now we're down to seven stitches on both of the arms. And I have this uh, forward, that's how I decided that they're gonna go on the body with their little claw kind of forward. So now, how do we position them on our stitches here? Um, we have 34 stitches. It's all about math, right? I want my arms to be right in the side, even on both sides. So I've got 34 stitches. I have a total of 14 stitches uh, between the two arms. So if I take that 14 away from the 34, that leaves me 20 stitches. So that means I can have 10 stitches here in the front and 10 here in the back. So I'm going to divide that up right now before I, um, to get it set up to actually knit the arm in. So how I'm going to do that is I'll just take another needle here. This is the center back right here. And I'm going to take five stitches off of this left hand needle. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna slip the five stitches off of the other side, the other half of the back. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I have five here. I need to have uh, seven for this first arm. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We need to take two stitches off of the front, move them around. That's six, seven, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I need one more stitch on the front. You know, knitting is a lot about math. <laughs> so I said nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. forget which one I'm doing yet. Um, got to reorient myself. I got to talk in there. So this is the back. This is the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's correct. Okay. Six, seven, ten. Okay. Lay this out here so you can see it now. This is my front. I have 10 stitches. The back, I have 10 stitches. Both shoulders where the arms are going to go is seven stitches. So the first thing I do now is I need to, here's my live yarn. Get it back here. And I need to knit over to the shoulder, right? Or where the arm goes. And because I'm, <laughs> it's right here in the middle, I'm gonna take another needle 
It's like, how many needles can we have on there? <laughs> we can work with quite a few actually. So I'm going to slip over. This is the back stitches. But I'm going to slip back over to where I'm at, where my live yarn is. So there's five stitches. Here's five stitches. And <clears throat> if I would have brought a marker in, um, I'll, I'll know that that's my, it's real, I can tell that's the center. So I should put a marker right there, but I don't, I left my, all my little goodies in my other room. So we're fine. Okay. We're going to knit over to the arm. One. Oop. Would it help if I slip that stitch off? Two, three, four, five. Now that's the first half of the back, and this is where the arm starts. So I'm going to pick up an arm and I'm going to get it lined up just like what we did with the legs. Get my needles down here on the points. This is that three needle bind off without binding off. Okay, here we go. Our first arm. And this was actually row, or is actually row 71 of the body. Now, um, this is just where I choose to knit it on. I have found that that works. You can do it sooner. You can knit another row. I just think that gets it up close to where the, the you know, neck, it, there's one more row of decrease that we're going to do uh, before we stop and start working on the head. So I just find that row 71 works well for me. And I've just figured that out by trial and error. I've tried different locations and, um, you know, they all come out um, within a row or two of each other, but this one's working and it's, so it's what I'm, what, it's what I do now. Okay, I guess got three more stitches here to buy, um, knit together. Okay. And that's our last stitch on the arm. And our arm, first arm is knitted into the body. Now we're going to knit across the 10 stitches in the front. A little bulky here trying to stay within the camera and have a table underneath me. I, I'm not used to that. I, it's awkward. So I'm trying my best to stay in the camera, make it so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> but actually, I, I've tried a number of different ways with putting these together, and this is what I like to do and I like the finish of the arm and the leg knitted in like this. I just think that it is a little more refined than my sewing technique. Let's put it that way. Okay, so that's the 10 stitches there on the neck and now we're ready to do the shoulder again or the top of the arm, whatever, whatever we need to call that. And get this, um, make sure I'm on the correct side here. Yes, I am. Okay. Get all of the needles scooted down here where they need to be close to the tip. So we can actually work with it. And here's my first 
stitch, try to get everything, um, you know, snugged up as best as we can. And there we go. That works pretty good. Get to the next one here. And as soon as we get this arm on, I will be knitting uh, two more rows and then I will go to work on the head. But I will end this video with completing the next two rows and uh, so the head will be all on one of its own. Well, I split my yarn on that one. That's not good. Okay. Just your first time through, this is going to feel awkward, and it is a little bit awkward, but just take your time. Uh, if you really get stuck, use our little tool or a crochet hook to uh, pull this yarn through if you're uh, knitting is kind of tight and sometimes mine gets tight on that cast on and trying to maneuver through all of these different layers of stitches. No shame in using one of those little tools at all. I may have to on this stitch here. <laughs> I'm almost to the end of my skein, and of course when you do, it all kind of comes loosey-goosey. Get back down here to the point of my needles, that always, well, okay, so yeah, this, I'm just giving up on this stitch. It wants to be a little tight, so I'm just feeding this needle in backwards here. So I can catch the yarn loop. Okay, I'm gonna get that before I lose it. Slip, see I totally went off of this film there, didn't I, or the film. I don't think it's film, Linda. I think it's called a video and <laughs> it's all digital <laughs> or whatever. Oh my goodness, showing my age. All right, let's see if I can get this next one now with my knitting needle here. Down to the last two. I just keep messing with that little end yarn in my way. Okay. Well, silly. I'm telling you, there is something magic about sitting in your recliner knitting. I don't have those issues in the recliner. What is it with the recliner chair and knitting? It just makes that knitting go so smooth. It seems. Okay, we're going to try this one more time here. Okay, last stitch. Oh my goodness, there. Whew. I made that look really difficult. <laughs> it shouldn't have looked so difficult. And then I have these last five stitches on the back of the, I'll have to feed this little strand of yarn. I knew that was happening. I'll feed it back inside the body there and get it secured. But I have the last half of the stitches on the back to knit. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's, I'm going to leave that in because we're going I'm going to do two more rows 
and then I'm going to leave all these stitches live and I'm going to start working on the head and uh, <laughs> I'll take out some of these needles okay I don't need all those needles I just happen to have uh, a couple of sets of them and so it lets me have several to work with but that's it that's the the system for putting those legs on and arms on um, and let me tell you that is fastened secure um, it it works dandy so I'm going to end the video here I am going to do two more rows Row, um, this was row 71. Row 72 is a decrease row, and then it's a knit row, or just a plain knit row after that. Uh, I think that's a purl row, maybe, if you were knitting in the flat. But you wouldn't be putting these, you know, you could put these arms on this way if you're knitting in the flat. You can knit them in. You don't have to be knitting in the round to put the arms on this way. Um, but then the next video I make, which will be video after this one, this is five, the next one is six, and it's gonna be, the head uh, is gonna be all on one and attaching it to the body. So um, there you go. I hope you all are getting a lot of knitting done, and I hope I'm, or you're able to stay up. I hope you're not waiting for me, is what I should say, to get the next video done, because I literally am knitting this along and videoing uh, at the same time. So this is about as live as I can make it <laughs> without it being live. So happy knitting, and we will be back. Um, I'll get my head started and start making video number six. Have a good day. Bye now.